price action trader. Okay. It means I, ver I rely very little on indicators and oscillators because my belief is everything that you need to know is inside that price chart. Price is telling you what it's gonna do. Price is telling you what's happening. Okay. Everything you need to know is on those charts. Now, that includes support and resistance. It includes chart patterns like triangles. It includes trend lines. Indicators or oscillators do are exactly, think of them as the translator. When you can't understand what price action is trying to tell you, an indicator, an oscillator will help you interpret what price is trying to say. Now, there's a lot of people who build whole trading strategies on using oscillators and indicators. They'll combine MACD with RSI, with, with stochastics, with you know, God knows what else in between. And they'll say, when this does that, and that does that, and I cross it over that, I, I buy or sell. Keep in mind, all indicators, no matter which ones you're using, only have certain data they can rely on. Now, they have all types of formulas, but they all rely on the open, the close, the, the, open, the, close, the high, the low, and volume. Those are the only numbers. And what it means is these oscillators and indicators are just reconfiguring all of those, those same numbers with different mathematical calculations. So they are the interpreters. They take what price has done and try to put some type of formula into it to tell you what price is trying to say. But price action is among the most popular trading concepts. A trader who knows how to use price action the right way can often improve his performance and his way of looking at charts significantly. Now, however, there are still a lot of misunderstandings and half-truths circulating that confuse traders and set them up for failure. So first, let's define exactly what price action is. Okay. Now, it's amongst the favorite to short-term traders. Price action brings together an interesting mix of information and different views. This includes historic price patterns, technical indicators, and the investor's ability to read the markets. And this is what price action really breaks down to, is your ability to read the market, your ability to look at a chart and see what it's trying to tell you. Many investors see the stock market as an information exchange where all views and strategies meet and try to achieve at a fair price. Now, remember, you have price on a chart. You have all these technical indicators. You have all these funny things like support and resistance, triangle patterns and everything else. But guess what? The market is made up of millions of human beings. They're all looking at the same thing, but they're all deciding something different. There's huge amounts of market psychology factored into the markets. So as many of the decisions associated with price action trading are subjective, what one investor may see as a breakout pattern, another may see as a potential reversal. Compare and contrast this with pure technical analysis, where you effectively ignore the experience of the investor in favor of cold, hard trends. Human nature dictates that the futures commodities prices can be extremely volatile. This is one of the reasons that I tell my traders, my students, everybody I'm meeting at seminars, everybody I'm meeting at conferences, limit yourself to a handful of assets. Okay. If you trade a handful of assets, and hopefully those assets are connected in some way, like I trade the euro and, and euro crosses, that's it. I don't trade Facebook, I don't trade Bitcoin. I look at them, but I don't trade any of them because I've become not an expert. I'm not an expert at anything, but I know what my six or seven assets are trying to tell me on the charts because I can see what's going on within the charts. Now, I'll try to give you a story. 
you're Mr. Smith. Now, Mr. Smith has had the same job for 10 years. Mr. Smith has lived in the same house for 15 years. The wife and the kids. And the kids have grown up in that house. Everything's been fine. You've lived on that same street for 15 years. You get up in the morning. You walk into the kitchen. You push the button on the coffee machine. You walk back into the shower. You get your shower. You walk in the bedroom, put on your clothes, get downstairs, get your coffee. You haven't even really opened your eyes. You're not even conscious yet. You push to open the door to get in the garage. You push the garage door opener. You hit the car and draw and reverse to get out of the driveway. And you're on autopilot. Now, you pull out the driveway, and you know from all of your years of experience and being personally involved in this route that if you see the garbage truck uh, turning on the main street, that you have to go down the second street and cut around them. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck behind them. But you also know today is a holiday, a school holiday. so. There's going to be no buses or, or, or kids at the school, so you can cut back over to third and make it back to the highway real quickly. When you get on the highway, you know exactly where to head over to that exit ramp to get off the highway. You know if traffic's slower, you where you're going to get off because you understand what is happening. And this is what happens with your charts. Okay. They don't always go the same route. But you understand how to react to them and you can take in all of this information because you understand that personality. Now, the kids have gone off to university. You and your wife decided, you know what, it's time to sell the house. We're going to move to a condo. Buy this great, big, beautiful new condo just a couple blocks from where you live. But guess what? Everything is out of the ordinary. You get up in the morning. You can't find your way to the kitchen. You can't find the coffee machine because now it's you know, not down the steps and in the other room and sitting at the edge of the counter. You have to find it. So now you're fully conscious, but you're aware of the changes. And sooner or later, you're going to have them all under control. And this is what happens when you trade a handful of assets. You can see the routes are going. You can see what's happening. You're familiar with them, and you can adjust when you see something happening and you realize it's happening. And you see that trash truck going on the third, and you know the school's out, and you know this one. But when you're trading random assets, and you're trading Facebook today, and you're trading Amazon tomorrow, and you're trading Bitcoin the next day, you have really no personal understanding of this asset. And price action is about being able to look at your charts and understand, and be able to understand the historic information. To be understand when the euro is trading, God knows where it is today, how low it is, but understand what it's trying to do and where it could go. Because if I just went over and saw, oh, the euro jumped up today and it jumped up from 95 to 100, I said, wow, there's a rally in the euro. I'm going to buy the euro. You have no idea that the euro is at the lowest place it's been in 35 years and that it's, it's falling apart. And if something doesn't happen with oil prices, the euro is going to keep tumbling. You have no idea because you don't know what that Euro chart's trying to tell you. Now, often overbought or oversold situations occur because of fear and greed. While well, panic selling can take over an event of disappointing news. What do you think happened to the pound in the last two days with the craziness from the tax cuts to the, the, you know, the even the World Bank stepping in and saying, you know, this is craziness. And today, you know, the, the Bank of England had to step in and, and, and stop an entire financial crisis. Well, you trade the pound, you know what to do. But unfortunately, too many people see this in the headlines of the paper, jump in and try to pay trade the pound, and they make mistakes. So let's talk about how you would read price action on your charts. The key to reading price action charts is to take in short-term fluctuations. It's also critical to notice emerging trends and focus on patterns which repeat time and time again. You hear traders talk about swing patterns, support and resistance, wave analysis, trend lines, moving averages to name but a few. Candlesticks and bars are also very popular. But before we go out there and get into left field, you have to become an expert on these. Now, for instance, I 
Oh, here, let's pop up a live chart. I don't ever have a chart. Sorry. Clicked on the wrong button there. Give me a second. I don't ever have a chart that doesn't have my support and resistance lines across. Because it tells me automatically when I'm looking at a chart, what is happening in the markets. Not just, I can see on the chart that the, you know, the euro dipped all the way down to, what, 96, 95, 94. Now it's come back up a little bit. We look at the euro pound. It's a mess. But these are chart patterns, support and resistance lines. These support and resistance lines are historic. There's not something I drew on the charts today. Well, it happened to me. I've drawn them on the charts in this price level over the last week or two because the euro's never traded this level before. But support and resistance lines are critical for reading price action, for looking at your chart and understand what it's trying to tell you. Look, these support, and the reason there's colored lines, striped lines, dotted lines, thick lines, these are my personal keys. My personal legend to reading this map. And I know what they mean. Thicker lines tell me that these are very strong lines that have been on the charts for a very long time. Thin little red lines, tell me they're not significant support and resistance levels, but they're interesting support and resistance levels. Gold, in my own world, tells me that they're short term. I've just put them on fairly recently. So everything tells me something. Because as price moves up and down, once you've got all your support and resistance levels around price and price moves to the next level, those support and resistance levels hold on you know, for, for true forever. You know, the euro is eventually going to climb back. I don't know when, but it's eventually going to climb back to 110, 120, 130, maybe a year from now, maybe two years from now. But when it gets to those prices, those levels I drew on there six months ago, a year ago, are still valid. So can you look at what we see right now on the euro? And we're not talking about making a trading decision. Okay. We're just looking at this chart. The first thing we can see is today, or the last couple of days, this level and this level have been significantly important. We see price eased down and then bounced off of the 096.54 and is moving back up. Now, would I make a trading decision at this point? No, but price action is trying to tell me something. I'm going to look for see what happens at that point. If it bounces off and starts heading down, maybe I'll consider a sell with my target being down here. If it comes down here and bounces off moving back up, I might consider a buy. Okay, I, I'm not making any trades. I'm reading what price is trying to tell me. And this is just barely the first step. But I'm trying to look at price and see what it's trying to tell me. So what's critically important? My support and resistance levels. Okay, trend lines are also important on your chart. But for short-term trading, it's really hard sometimes to put these on your charts. This is constantly adding. No, oh, nothing's locked. Why won't? Doesn't seem to want to let me draw something on my charts. Let's try and extend the line. Well, we can get it that way. Now, we could draw our trend lines this way. You know, I love TradingView as a provider, but I guess they've gotten too many developers on. They're getting too, too big globally 
that they're constantly updating and updating and changing things. And it becomes very difficult to stay on top of every everything they're changing in their development. Used to be, I could quickly find a chart. Now they've made it really complicated to find your chart. I could quickly save a name. Now they, they keep adding fields, I don't know, but that's besides the point. I don't need to go on about that. But that's the, one of the first steps in price action trade is looking at your charts, being able to see something and having support and resistance levels on there. Okay. Now, when sometimes you can't understand what price is telling you, now here, look, we, we see that Bitcoin, and it's not, I don't trade Bitcoin, so don't think about it. Any, but if you see this support line is holding price pretty steadily here in 19,136. Now, do I think it's going to drop lower by looking at price action? Do I think it's going to jump up? Now, I'm confused. So here I have MACD on my charts, and MACD shows me there's very little action and it doesn't, it's not giving me a crossover. It's not giving me a buy or sell. So it's really not even helping me interpret the markets. So there's no potential trade action here, okay, in my price action reading. Okay, again here. Now, what becomes critically important when we have these zones on our charts are what happens specifically at those zones, okay? We can call them support or resistance or we can call them price zones, okay? But price, when it goes, gets to those zones and then freezes and does something at those zones, it's trying to tell you something. It's talking to you. It's hollering at you. So what's critical, what's important is at these zones. Now, when we also see things like chart patterns, like triangles or double bottoms, bull flags, bull pennants on our charts, and they are developing on one of our price zones and we get a breakout, it is trying to sell you something more. Now, because I'm a price action trader, I only trade from triangles, but I've also lumped everything in. Like we took a pattern called a falling wedge. We have a rising wedge. We have a pennant. To me, these are all triangles because when I learned in elementary school what a triangle was, it was something that had three sides and an apex and those three sides, they could be moving. We could have an isosceles triangle that all the sides were at the same angle, but we had a base and the two sides were moving. Well, the difference between a, the different kind of triangles are what angles the sides are moving. So on a wedge, the two sides are moving at different angles, but they're still moving in an apex. Because all I'm concerned with is the breakout of that pattern. Now, a lot of people in our industry, okay, very few people in our industry because it moves too fast, trade from head and shoulders. Double bottoms and double tops are that happen so often in our industry that they have no validity. A triple top or a triple bottom is when price hits that same level three times, moves up, comes back down, hits it again, moves back off, comes back down, and hits it again, and they're hitting those strategic price levels over and over and over again. That gives you an ability to trade that level. And if that happens to be a level that's at a price zone alert, at a support or resistance level, that magnifies the importance of that pattern. So when you see that developing, price is trying to tell you something from that point. And you need to listen to what it's saying. So when a chart is about to crash through a support level, it's unlikely to do so in one fell swoop. Prices move and they're constantly bouncing around, but 
but they don't do things drastically right, without something fundamentally happening. So eventually the price will crash through the support level, often prompting an array of short selling. So whether you're using candlestick charts or bar charts. Now, when I started trading, we all used bar charts because we would sit there with graph paper and draw everything by hand. Okay. Candlesticks just give you a much better visual representation of price. Now, I don't advocate to anybody candlestick pattern recognition. I think memorizing specific patterns of candles is detrimental to proper trading because then you're expecting something to happen based on this candlestick interpretation of these two or three candles. But price patterns can help often explain to you exactly what price is trying to tell you. And when the candlestick, the nice thing about a candlestick is you can see when the wick keeps hitting this level or is it the body? You know, is the body hitting that resistance level and bouncing off or is the wick of the, the high or wick of the low? Because by looking at those, you can start making a better interpretation. But ultimately, what we're looking for is a breakout. We're looking for price to tell you, okay, I've made a move. It's time to look for, for a trade. And ultimately, reading what the textbook tells you doesn't outweigh what price is telling you. So what you're looking for is price to tell you exactly what it wants you to do. So the key to any successful price action trading strategy is to remove the peripheral noise such as fundamental data and look at price patterns, trends and other forms of anal chart analysis. When combining with good old fashioned experience and a feel for the markets, this can create a high potential strategy. Don't forget, even if you have an open position based on any of the following price action strategies, you should always look at the technical data to set a stop loss. You should always have yourself protected. Now, there is a key piece of information that a lot of people do not use. Now, in our type of trading, it's not accurate. And this is volume. Because the volume that appears on the charts is the volume based on the, the trades being pay, placed to specific liquidity providers. It isn't like if you, now if you're trading CFDs, I'm sorry, if you're trading stocks, remember with stocks, you get actual volume because the, the stock exchanges can tell you exactly how many shares are traded. If you're trading commodities, the commodities exchange are reporting exactly how many contracts are being traded at those because those two asset types are going through those exchanges. But CFDs, since they don't go through exchanges, the volume is different. And Forex has no exchange. Cryptocurrency has no exchange. So the volume coming up on our charts is based on liquidity providers. But it's been tested in the markets, not by me, but by mathematicians and people that do statistical data testing, is that the major assets and the volume that shows on your charts, even though that volume isn't the cumulative volume because there's nowhere to get the cumulative volume, is reliable because it's like a survey. You know, a political survey only takes in, you know, a couple hundred people or a couple thousand people to project polls, the winning people at elections, you know, what millions of people do but it's based on that percentage of random information being accurate because you're taking a good enough sample. So volume helps you make a final determination when you're looking at price action because volume should support your decision. So when you have your volume on your charts, you see a breakout pattern, you see it coming above support the supporter resistance level, 
and you think, ah, price is going to climb and soar, so I'm going to go into the markets with a buy or the opposite way with a sell. Okay, Volume should support your action because you're not the only person in the world seeing this. So one of the key aspects of price action trading when using support and resistance levels is the fact that once support is breached, it can reverse and become resistance. But there's no guarantee at any time that price is going to break that support and continue in that direction. So one of the reasons volume is important is once the market gets some type of movement in there, it's very hard to stop it drastically. You know, it's like putting a hamster in a cage and he starts turning that wheel. That wheel starts turning easier and easier. Same thing in a, an asset. When the traders are jumping in to support that buy position, okay, and that wheel starts turning, it's hard to stop it on the dime. But keep in mind that support and resistance, I intermix the terms. I also say price level sometimes because Resistance slips to support, support slips to resistance. All I know it, it was a strategic, critical, important price level. When price is moving up, it's your resistance. When price goes above it, it becomes your support. So it's no different than, say, a ladder. You know, you got the ladder up against the house, and you got to go paint the side of the house. Well, that ladder's got so many steps on it. You're going to climb up that ladder. Well, when you climb up the ladder four steps and the wife calls you, you got to come down those steps. So those steps were supporting your move up. Now they're supporting your move down. Okay. But when you're painting the house, you get to that critical level of the house, say underneath the windows where you got to paint. So that if I look at how many steps you went up to get the level, and as you step up and down to paint the wall, I can judge those steps on that ladder. And if you think of the price movement as the steps on the ladder, I can judge by looking at what's happening, what is happening on the wall. I could imagine three windows being on that wall, and in between those windows, you got to step up higher because you got to get in, in between the windows. And then when you start stepping down lower, you got to paint under those windows, but you're going to stay under that level, you know, for the eight feet that those windows are running before you click up. The, so make a picture in your mind. Okay, and then look for patterns, okay? But these patterns are cri only critically important when they happen important. Because like candlesticks make all types of patterns all the time. They're only important at the time of a breakout from, a, from a, like a triangle or important when they develop on a support or resistance level. So you don't need to read them, but one of the most important ones we have is what we call mother bar inside bar, mother bar and baby bars, is when the next candle or the next bar fits completely inside the previous body of the previous candle. So the primary bar is sometimes called the mother bar, which will often indicate a period of consolidation and potential turning point from key support and resistance levels. Okay. But you only need to see this because you're combining, what your eyes are doing is combining this. When prices hanging in the middle of a support or resistance zone. It's got no chart pattern on there. There's, there's no triple tops or triple bottoms. There's no triangle developing. It doesn't matter whether you have an inside bar, mother bar, baby bar. It doesn't matter whether you got a indecision candle unless it's directly on your support or resistance level. So you have to be able to read what price is telling you at these critical junctures is only when you take the time to understand how patterns emerge and what they indicate. Okay. So don't forget to also keep one eye on your stop loss limits at all times. So as you gather from all the above information, price action trading is based around trends and momentum. The idea is simple. Once a trend changes, then the momentum often grows. It's only when a stronger opposing trend emerges that the direction changes again. In between these relatively strong trends there are periods of consolidation, sideways training, and prices will often bounce off of support and resistance lines. So trading with the trends is an old adage.
But when you're looking at a chart and you see an emerging trend, you see volume coming up, you see it above a critical price level, guess what? That's the hamster in the cage. He's got that wheel turning, and the more that momentum happens, the faster that wheel turns, the, sl the longer it's going to take him to stop. You know, when they talk about a locomotive taking five miles to stop, you know, because you don't want it to flip off the track, you, know, you say, how is that possible? But when it was built up so much speed, yeah, it could jam on its brakes, and God knows all those cars will, or it can take off all the energy and slowly slow down, okay? and it takes a long distance. Well, that's what happens in the charts, and your price will tell you that. So when you see that momentum building, imagine that hamster running around. When you see price bouncing off of a particular points, imagine the steps on the ladder. Okay. Make it visual. See in your head what price is trying to tell you. But don't act with a trade until the market itself confirms your opinion. Being a little late in a trade is insurance that your opinion is correct. In other words, don't be an impatient trader. And volume is the thing that will keep you from being that impatient trader. Volume should be your final confirmation. Now, there are numerous disadvantages and advantages of using price action trading strategy, but ultimately it comes down to how disciplined you are as a trader. It makes trading easier. Instead of trying to memorize all this stuff, instead of trying to learn all these indicators and oscillators and read these new, limit your assets, understand how they trade, how they move, understand the time of day that they react, understand what they're doing, what, why these levels are critically important, what they do at those levels, and own them. You know, be able to look at them like you're looking at your own hand and understand exactly what price is trying to tell you. So many of the strategies you mentioned can be overcautious by some people. When waiting for a definitive trend and change, there may be times when interday prices can spike above resistance support and then recover. These can be false flags. Now, the fact is, too many traders want to make trades. If your whole job is about making trades and you don't feel satisfied unless you have a trade going, then price action trading isn't really that good for you. Because if you trade a limited amount of assets, you're waiting for the right things to happen. You may, I mean, I have weeks where I don't even do three trades, but I spend hours in the markets. Because I only want the most profitable, probable trades to make. Now, the basic difference is that between price action and technical analysis is price action incorporates both technical analysis and human input. Effectively, you're monitoring emerging trends and reading these with varying degrees of discipline and experience. So, thank you very much for joining us. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact Elvexo and our customer support agent would be glad to help you out. We always want to make sure that you get an answer to all of your questions. So have a great night. And remember this class has been recorded. If you want to watch a recorded version, just use this come back like you came to this live class in about 24 hours and you'll click over and automatically see the recorded version. Good night now.